sticks. Oops. Okay. Yeah, I hope you're good. Do I? Okay. And is the time okay? <laughs> is 540. Um, we do have a quorum, so we'll open the meeting. Uh, for the record, the members and staff present are Harry Bailey, Marilyn McDonald, Eileen Prisco, Mark Peterson, um, Nicole Salvo, the administrative assistant, and myself, Wendy Smith. Um, I'll now read the governor's order for online meetings into the record. Disclosure pursuant to section to section 20 of chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 and act relative to extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency. This meeting of the Conservation Commission for the town of Bridgewater will be hybrid and accessible to the public through remote participation to the greatest extent possible. There will be no public attendance permitted. Citizens who wish to tune into the meeting may do so via Zoom. Um, all the information is always located on the agenda, which is found on bridgewatermma.org. Um, okay, so we have a lot. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. We have public hearings. We have old business. We have Zero Lakeshore Center being continued, 815 Bedford Street, notice of intent, notice of intent for zero and 350 cross, notice of intent for 25 Butternut Way. We have new business, notice of intent 66 Hoopa, notice of intent 674 Summer Street, um, a request for determination of applicability for 1016 South Street, a notice of intent for zero Winter Street, and is it a notice of intent for 80 Spring? It is a request for determination, 80 Spring Street, map 21. Okay, thanks. And then we have some Conservation Commission business. We have uh, four certificates of compliance, um, administrative adjustments for the transmission lines, um, and a discussion of a cease and desist for Lakeshore, and then we have minutes and adjournment. So with that, we'll get started. Um, first up is the notice of intent for Zero Lakeshore Center, Map 83, Lot 85. The applicant representative is Claremont Lakeshore Bridgewater, LLC. Silva Engineering Associates PC and the DEP file number is SE 116-1525. And Marilyn has a continuance letter from them. Yep. Um, so notice of intent, Zero Lake Shore Center, uh, DEP SE 116-1525. Dear Chair Person and uh, Commission members, on July 23rd, 2024, I received a copy of the report by LEC Peer Review Report Number uh, 1 Addendum for the above project. In the report, Mr. Mark Mangelio included certain updated recommendations for the commission's consideration. I filed a response to LEC report on September 3rd, 2024. My client is preparing a supplemental response to LEC um, report. However, we will not be finalized before tonight's hearing. For that reason, I am requesting the hearing scheduled for September 26, 2024 be continued to October 10th, 2024. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Sincerely, Edmund uh, J. Brunin, Jr. So with that being read into, um, I would uh, have a motion, make a motion for the chair to entertain that uh, we continue to October 10th, 2024, and take up discussions at that point. Yep. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Roll call vote, Marilyn? Aye. Eileen? Aye. Harry? Aye. Uh, Mark? Cannot vote on this. Oh, and myself, Wendy. Aye. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Marilyn. Yep. Um, next up, we have a notice of intent for 815 Bedford Street, Map 88, Lot 23. Applicant representative, Silver Engineering PC. The DEP file number is SE 116-1540. So do we have as someone on that? Who's, not, who's on that's doing that tonight? Oh, we're on, we're on, we're on. All right, we're, we're on. on. Uh, okay, so let me open up the one that we've done. We can discuss where we were. We were... Uh, and hi, Rebecca. Hi, how are you? Good. Uh, looking in the wrong spot. Here, hang on. Um, I'm trying to get the latest plans on the screen, and then we can go over what we're looking at. 7.30, we have... We have missing transit. You would think I'd be more prepared since I had so much time to get ready. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. I was going to say Nicole did did me a favor, and I didn't uh, take the opportunity. Okay, 
I don't know where it is. We're going to go with this one. Okay. We saw it. Hold on. Let me try one more time. Sorry. What are you trying? Oh, just... to share my screen, to share your screen. I was just, oh, you just did it? Yeah, you have sharing not turned on, so I can't. Does that make sense? Yeah, it always gets me. To oh, that there work. we go. There we go. We're, okay. good. We're good. It always, it's a finicky one. <laughs> yep, yep. Okay. There we go. Now I have to make sure I'm not sharing anything inappropriate. I've done that. Nope, <laughs> just the locust map. I think you were traumatized that night. <laughs> I'm very traumatized. Same thing in the night I screamed at my kids at home. I won't do that again. Okay, we are here because we have a wetland that is off-site, and we are doing some improvements that are within the 100-foot buffer. So the improvements for this site, I'm scrolling a little bit more. Here we go. Drainage basin grading is the work in the 100-foot buffer outside of the 50. Uh, the discharge for all the drainage components are outside of the 100-foot buffer. The project changed substantially from the first time we submitted it where we were grading up to the 50. So we are now less impact. The last time we discussed this, we were all waiting for the town engineer to finish the planning board review process. Mm -hmm. They have finished the planning board review process. They actually issued a, an approval. They've issued the order of condition, uh, the conditions of approval. The appeal period has, has ceased. And I've actually submitted a COA plan set to the town engineer for his review today so that he can sign off and give it his blessings and we can move on. If the commission had any questions on any of that, I can answer any of it, most of it. Okay. Um, does anyone have any questions regarding it? Nice job, Rebecca. Um, I, I'm actually very good with it. You gave us a courtesy update on the last meeting. It looks like mm -hmm. everything's been done with the engineer review. Um, if anything, it's been a great improvement on the plan. So I, I've got I've got nothing. <laughs> Eileen, do you have anything? No, I'm good. Okay, Harry? No. All right, Mark? Uh, no. Okay, and I'm good with it. I'm, it's moved a little bit back, so that's good. Drainage looks good. Everything looks good. So do we have, um, what are we doing? Help me I would out. open it up to any comments from oh, anybody. On any the comments from the abutters? Anybody on that has a question or a concern regarding this property? Stop sharing so you can see. Nicole, do you see anybody? Uh, I'm looking. Just give me a second. All right. Um, I don't see anybody. Okay. You come up as Bob Ruley. Mm -hmm. I am Bob today, okay? <laughs> Bob's looking good tonight. <laughs> yeah. He's looking like a whole blank screen. It's perfect. <laughs> um, okay. So do we have a motion to approve? No, nope, would, I would have a motion to close the oh, hearing first. Oh, all right. Thing. Sorry about that. See, it's, it's been okay. a long time. We're Everyone closing the hearing can... first. How about a motion to close the hearing? Go ahead, Marilyn. Motion to close 815 Bedford Street, Map 88, Lot 23. Second. Thank you. Um, and now do we have a motion to approve? We have to, we have to do the roll call on the closing. So. Oh, my gosh. Wendy, you, you need cliff notes. You need a little list. I have them. Oh. I'm not reading them, no. I'm giving you my old voice. Okay, how about a roll call vote? How about Marilyn? Aye. Eileen? Aye. Mark? Aye. Harry? Aye. And myself, Wendy? Aye. All right, Chair, can I entertain a motion, please, for approval of 815 Bedford Street, Map 88, Lot 23? Excellent. And a second? Second. Thank you. And a roll call vote. Marilyn? Aye. Eileen? Aye. Mark? Aye. Harry? Aye. And myself, aye. Thank you very much. Good luck. Oh, no. Please, let me continue. <laughs> oh, are you up for, oh yeah, you're up for Cross Street. Okay, so Bedford I'm is all set. Um, next up, we have a notice of intent for 0 and 350 Cross Street, map 118, lots 89, 23, 24, 25. The applicant representative is Robert Vaza, Silver Engineering Associates, PC. And the DP file number is SE 116, 1550. Okay, if I can do this a little quicker this time, sharing, sharing this screen. All right, 
we've been here. We've walked the site. We didn't, we had a tiny concern, I think at the time of how close we were to the, the, the 25 buffer, but I explained at the walk that that's where I get the lowest elevations. Mm -hmm. We've gone through planning board review. We've gone through town engineer finalizing everything. We've gotten planning board approval and also their conditions to proceed. Um, I know there was concerns and there's going to be a, a closeout of the driveway one. The previous submittal yeah. that we tried for moving the driveway, we do need to close out of that. So yeah. I don't know. Uh, um, otherwise, it's a four lot subdivision and it has country drainage along the side, infiltration, all the bills, all the checks. If there's any questions. So I was this the one um, and any of the commission can help me out here was there something that came in with the dep on this one with four lot subdivision no, that's the other one we'll get there oh that's another one yeah okay all right so, so basically i'm sorry no go ahead from my recall uh rebecca they'll come in individually with the notices of intent okay. there was a yes. piece of parcel getting uh, deeded on this for a community parcel deed yep Yep, that's all uh, whether that was going in planning or we were going to do it also uh that's my yep. recollection of this and i know know that you can back i had nothing further um on this myself so yep okay anybody else um have any questions or concerns Mar um marilyn you just talked eileen um, harry no my feet still hurt okay <laughs> <laughs> from that walk yeah <laughs> Yeah. you're in trouble that was a while ago um how about mark do you have any questions or concerns i just still have, i still have the concerns i had last time about um the excessive um brows by uh possible maybe. brows by yeah. those, unless you've taken awesome. pictures and know for sure that they were out there we don't know that for sure yeah that's my concern okay thank you um do we have any are there any abutters on that have any questions or concerns you can raise your hand or use the raise your hand little thing at the bottom of your screen. I forget what you call it. I'm not seeing anything, Wendy. Okay, thanks. Um, so do I have a motion then if we have no further and we're all set to um, yeah. close the hearing? Get it, Wendy. Uh, make a motion to notice of intent to close 0 and 350 cross map 118, lot 89, 23, 24, 25. Okay, second, someone? Second. Thanks. And a roll call vote. Marilyn? Aye. Eileen? Aye. Harry? Aye. Mark? No. Okay. And myself? Aye. Um, and then we have a motion. Uh, do we have a motion to approve? Chair, so, for chair to entertain a motion to approve notice of intent 0 um, and 350 cross street map 118, lot 89, 23, 24, 25. I would like discussion after though. Second. All right. So for discussion, I just wanted to double check in with Rebecca and the rest of the members. Um, do we I need to do a roll call vote first? I'm sorry. No, oh, it's discussion period. Okay. We're, we're good, honey. Um, so I just want to make sure that one of the boards planning or both of us have that order in for the um for the deed that no you know further development on that parcel. So Rebecca, any update on that? Um, planning board decision. Let's take a peek real quick. We'll find which one it is. Street private perpetuity. Homeowners Association will be established. Draft HOA to planning board. Maintenance bond. Street lights. Curb ramps. Security. Easements recorded. Lot release. Dwelling. Da, 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 said roadway operation and maintenance document. Hang on, I'm still going. Sorry. Yep, sorry. So that parcel was to be deeded to the HOA for recreation. And no. Parcel A, as shown on the plan, shall remain as conservation open space in perpetuity, and the ownership of the parcel shall remain with the HOA. 
proof of conformance to this requirement in the form of a recorded document at the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds shall be submitted to the Planning Board before the release of the first buildable lot. Parcel A will be maintained and managed by the Homeowners Association and shall only be utilized for passive recreation and conservation purposes for those with rights to the property. That would be 32, number 32 of the list. You guys could always condition that that document that's being recorded is also attached. provided to CONCOM prior to uh, our signature on any COs. So okay. you can add that. To that, the... that was what I was going to ask, because I think it, it's just a good safety net to have. And I know, Eileen, you get a little bit more experience with zoning, I mean, with um, deeding stuff, but I'm, I'm good now. Yeah. Does, does passive recreation, that, that uh, doesn't include like dirt bikes and all-terrain vehicles, correct? No. So they yeah. so they won't be able to use dirt bikes and all terrain vehicles. They're not considered passive recreation. So it's just walking. It's it's yeah, it's walking, walking hiking, running, light camping, it. like uh, you could take a tent out there. But mm -hmm. yeah. How how would that be enforced? Uh, if the HOA would be responsible for it. It's their property. So someone would be if someone went and camped out there or took a dirt bike or something, they'd be on private property. But it's so I'm sure one of the neighbors would be unhappy. We're not own it. We don't own it though. It's yeah. under ownership of the HOA. But it's. I mean, we're trading this. As we're not compromise. taking ownership of it, so Perhaps we are. Not. A compromise would be to write it in your order that what passive recreation means, so right. that we that's can tie the two idea. together. Rebecca, do you know if that's defined in the bylaw? I'm, I apologize. I don't, I don't, I don't know. My head. I, don't I know. was wondering. There might be a definition in there. And, um, I, was I, mean, I know you definitely cannot have uh, dirt bikes in conservation. You know. Yeah, yeah, those are not considered so passive. Not I can add that in if Mark wants. I, I have no problem just defining it clearly. That idea. Okay. And also, uh, hunting would would hunting be allowed out there? Um, so, here. Rebecca, can I just clarify? Sorry. The property, though we're putting these provisions, is remaining to be owned by the HOA. Am I correct mm -hmm. in that? That is correct. The HOA so, will own it. No one can go hunting because it's private property, Mark. Unless so the owners of the HOA. Passing. The owners could. Gave yeah. them explicit permission. Well, the owners themselves could. It's 500 feet from a dwelling anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. Right. You need a roll call vote. Yep, yes. Vote. So we all set with that? We're all set with that, Marilyn? Yep. Yeah, okay. that, that was my only uh, discussion point to make sure that that was in the order of conditions. Include. So we're covered okay. now with both planning and us, so that's good. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, so we have a roll call vote. Harry? Aye. Eileen? Aye. Mark? Uh, I'm glad the order of conditions is going to have the uh, passive recreation, but I'm a no. Okay. Um, Marilyn? Aye. And myself, Wendy? Aye. So that is Wendy, close. if you guys wouldn't 50. mind moving forward, Wendy Marilyn, if someone votes no, can you just make sure they state why, just so we have it for reference in the uh, um the documentation if someone were to appeal? Okay. Good. So do you can Mark do that now? Yes, he should. Similar to the way planning board does it. If they are a no vote, they just have to cite what part of the bylaw they are uh referencing in their decision of of no. Okay. So I don't know what part of the bylaw, but I have open questions about whether or not there had been um, um, goat browse in the whole entire area and whether that affected any um, delineations and um, determinations of what wetland features were there. I don't know which point of the bylaw this references. Okay. I think that would be in the bylaw. But... The entire one. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mark. Um, let's see. Next up, we have a notice of intent for 25 Butternut Way, map 37, lot 68. The applicant representative is Millbrook Homes, DNL Design Group Incorporated. The DP file number is SE 116 So do we have a representative on who's sharing with that? Uh, yes. Good evening. My name is uh, Peter Lavoy. I am with uh, DNL Design Group. Thank you. Um, I do apologize. I thought um, I heard you guys talking before, but I apologize. I thought we weren't on the agenda last time, and that's why we weren't here. Okay. 
All right. I and I can't remember because it was a month ago. So okay. No, uh, I just wanted that, to make that. With my just, notes. Okay. No, that's fine. Um, when did you have the abutter notice in the, in the uh, ad? If, if not, no. See, no. Um, so that's what I was. My I was curious about that. Do you happen to have the the legal ad? I do um, not have the legal ad with me. Oh. Because it was listed under old, so I was thinking maybe we read it, but I, I kind of don't know why I would have read it if no one was on for it. I have that we didn't have the abutted notices and that it didn't get open due to nobody, no representative. So let me take uh, a quick look and see if I have it. Hold on. I was just going to say the same thing. Thanks, Nicole. And I'm looking myself to see if you had sent them over because technically we can't open without a notice. And the lobby can't. Yeah. I find it on the public notices. It was uh, Sunday, August 18th, 25 Butternut Way. Oh, Rebecca, you want to read it? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Rebecca>. <laughs> See, you're uh, hanging on for a reason. Uh, well, yeah, I have more on the agenda. You got more. <laughs> I know, I know. All right. Uh, notice content. This was published Sunday, August 18th. 25 Butternut Way Legal Notice. Notice of Public Hearing, Conservation Commission, Bridgewater, Mass., in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Town of Bridgewater Local Wetland Bylaw, the Bridgewater Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on September 12, 2024, for a notice of intent filed by Kristen and Jonathan Marshall of, 20, of 25 Butternut Way. The applicant proposes to construct an addition onto their existing house with associated grading occurring within the 100 foot buffer. The property is owned by Kristen and Jonathan Marshall and is located at 25 Butternut Way, Bridgewater, Mass. Location address, including map 37, parcel 68. Oh yeah, okay, that's weird. Please contact the Bridgewater Conservation Office at 508-697-0950 for the time and location or link for virtual participation. All inter interested parties are encouraged to attend Agenda can be found at www.bridgewatermma.org at least 48 hours prior to the meeting date. Good up. Excellent. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. A bottle of notices? Public notices. Love it. Um, I And I'm sure that... I'm... I do believe I got proof of the abutter notices. And I bet you if I kept looking, I would have found the legal ad as well. I, I do believe I got those. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure too. That's what I. Yeah, was I do believe they noticed correctly. We spoke after uh, they they did. Okay. Because we did get a notice from Mass DEP, so you guys might have followed up. The abutters list was not included. Now it's coming back to me. My other the abutters uh, list was not included in the copy of the notice intent received by the Department of Commission. Please confirm compliance. So it uh, sounds like uh, you confirm compliance on that. Um, yes. Goal? Yes, Perfect. we did. We did send the abutters list. Right. Okay. All right. Great. So you're all set to go. Can you okay, share your I'll, screen? I'll try to share. Okay. Okay. I call it up the drawing a little bit to make it a little bit easier. Um, oh, I like it. Visual. So uh, the project's located at 25 Butternut Way. Uh, we have an existing uh, 43,000 square foot lot. Uh, we have an existing single family home in the center with the driveway. Septic is in the front yard. Um, there is a, a channel that runs along the bat back that was flagged. Um, and then we have the corresponding 50 foot buffer I show and then a hundred foot buffer uh, I show. Um, so you can see the dark, dark brown is the 16 by 51 addition that would be attached to the existing home. Um, so because we did add um, this impervious area, I proposed to do some roof recharge. Um, there are four Caltech 100s uh, with crushed stone located uh, on the east side of the uh, addition. Uh, and that's basically it. We do show a straw waddle that wraps around, wraps around the, the proposed work area. And then I also show a stockpile area right here in the front, in this location here. Um, all work will come from Butternut Way. Um, we do have a little bit of access around the back if we need be, come down the driveway and go around the building. 
Uh, and that's basically it. We're not, we're not cutting any trees down. It's all in the lawn area. Um, proposed grading will match what's there now. We're not really going to change the grade, except they're going to just dig a hole, put the foundation in, and then the backside will be a walkout like the existing structure is now. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. So the new addition is it's inside the 50, right? That's the 50 line. Uh, it's just outside the 50. I'm, I'm 50.6 from that, that channel in the back. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, members, anybody have any questions, thoughts, concerns? Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I, I do just, um, I've got my file from reviewing it for the last meeting. So I just had questions. I didn't see the 25 no foot touch on the plans. Um, I was looking for a scale on the plants to, to start measuring the 25 foot. And if this wetland line is an active line or if we need to go out and take a look at it um, through this process on this. So those were kind of what I had highlighted for questions. So I, I don't have the 25 foot no disturb, but the closest work is, is, is uh, 45 feet from that wetland. So we're not proposing any work at all in the 25, not even close to that 25 foot. Like I can we, we, we like to see that on the plans with the scale like just so you know but but um you don't have like an active anrad on this then we would, would need to just go out and eyeball it okay yeah i mean there's i no didn't do an anrad it's i i really I, I first filed a determination because i wasn't really doing any work but um yeah that's fine i mean yeah. okay, okay. Those um, my questions and concerns. I can take a quick look at it, and it doesn't hold it up. I mean, I can add the twenty-five foot no disturb, and I'll add the scale. I don't have a problem with that. That's fine. And the flags are still out there, right? They should be, but I can go out there and I can go out there and check and uh, let you know. All right. So we're talking so then, a, site, a site visit. What was that? We're talking a site visit. Yeah, I mean, we can run out there. All I would be asking then is on that proposed new building. Just to put a stake on the two corners. Okay. Yep. Just so we exactly. just so we know where that line is, and then uh, for the proposed building, the existing you know, there. So, but that's um that's a you know simple for us to run out and take a look at that. When when do you think you'll go out there so I can? Pretty much if you let us know when you stake it out, you just give Nicole an email that you staked it out, and then we'll get out there before the next meeting. Okay. If you feel you need to be on site, you're more than welcome. But some of us will go, you know, in, in a pair or individually and just take a quick look. Yeah, no, I mean it's minor, minor disturbance. I, I, I don't need to be there. And okay. It's all in, it's in lawn area, so. Yeah, we just like like to say consistent. If the line is a, is not an active line, we want to make sure that it that it's good. That's all. Doesn't okay. hold anything up. Okay, Eileen, do you have any questions uh, or concerns? There's no upgrade to the septic, so that means they're not adding any bedrooms, correct? Correct. There is no uh, there's no need to upgrade the system. It's a four bedroom now. It's going to be a four bedroom after. Okay. Harry, any thoughts, questions? I'm all set. Mark, I just want to bring up it's uh it's in the aquifer protection district. So I don't know if there's any special um in, um you know parts of the aquifer protection district that were pertain to this project. i um, just just want to let the applicant know on that. Yeah, I mean that, that's the that's the main reason why I added the recharge for the proposed roof, yeah. so I could I could show some recharge from putting the impervious on in that parcel. So is that that's for the runoff from the roof? Correct. Yeah, it's clean water, so it go, we we put it into a recharge system, a recharge chamber consisting of four. Well, um, Caltech 100s and some crushed stone. So you have, you basically have two and a half feet of crushed stone with um, four chambers, four plastic chambers inside the stone. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right. So um, with that, oh, are there any questions or concerns from a butters that may be on? You can raise your hand or use the raise your hand feature on the bottom of the Zoom screen. Peter, would you uh, just mind stop sharing the screen so I can see everybody? Okay, sorry about that. No, it's no worries. Okay. Wendy, I'm not seeing anybody who looks like they have any comments. 
Awesome. So do I have a motion to continue to 1010? We're going to get out to do a site visit, at least a couple of us. Yep. Motion to continue 25 Butternut Way, Map 37, Lot 68, till October 10th. Second. second. I, oh, Thank yeah. You. I thought you were saying you met the second date. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we had two people second. <laughs> um, okay. And a roll call vote, Marilyn? Aye. Harry? Aye. Eileen? Aye. Mark? Aye. Myself, Wendy? Aye. So we will see you back on on the 22nd. Just let um, Nicole On the 10th? Know. Uh, yeah, the the tenth. Tenth. On the 10th. On the 10th. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yep. And Peter, okay. if you can just um just shoot Nicole the email with, um, yeah. and if there's anybody like dogs on site, because we might just be coming out sporadically, um, okay. just, you know, let the homeowner know we'll knock on the door first. Okay. No, that sounds good. Thank you very much. All right. All right thank thank you. you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Next up, we have new business. We have a notice of intent for 66 Hooper. Um, map 35, lot 22 to 24, lot 35, and lot 85. The applicant representative is BSU, Nietzsche Engineering. Uh, the DEP file number is SE116-1556. Um, is someone on for that just before yes. I open up? Um, yep. Okay, yep. I'm just looking for my, my legal ads. One second. Uh, okay. 66. <clears throat> so Bridgewater State Brunel Hall legal notice, notice of public hearing conservation commission, Bridgewater, Massachusetts in accordance with Massachusetts general laws, chapter 131. Oh, um, section 40 in the town of Bridgewater local wetland bylaw, the Bridgewater conservation commission will hold a public hearing on September 26, 2024 for notice of intent filed by Nietzsche engineering on behalf of Bridgewater state university. The applicant proposes to renovate Burnell Hall and provide the following site improvements, reconstruction of an existing plaza, parking lot upgrades, mill and overlay curbing, pedestrian ramp and striping for ADA accessibility, rehabilitation and expansion of existing wet basin, drainage utility improvements and supportive utility infrastructure. The property is owned by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Board of Trustees of State Colleges, Commonwealth of Mass, Capital Asset Management and Maintenance, and is located at 66 Hoopa Street, Map 35, parcels 22 to, well, it says 22 to 44. I think it's 22 to 24, um, 35 and 85. Please contact the Bridgewater Conservation Commission at 697-0950 for the time, location, or link for virtual participation. All interested parties are encouraged to attend. Hi, that was a lot. good evening. That was Hi. a lot. Thank you for reading all that. Um, my name is Stephen Ventresca with Niche Engineering. With me is uh, Brian Biagini, also from Niche, um, and we're here to present the renovation um, project for Bunnell Hall. Um, and I just, I'm sorry to yeah. interrupt you. Um, we did receive legal ads. I just need to put that oh. in the record. That's all. Thank you. And I did. Um, and I did send the uh, affidavit of publication for the ad um, earlier today to Nicole. Yeah, I have that. Which yep. which you just yep. read. Okay. Yep. Um, so it, when as Brian's um, sharing screen, uh, so Bridgewater State um, uh, State Project, um, so meeting the regulations of the Stormwater Handbook. Um, as you know, we're not required to meet the regulations for the or the local bylaws for the town, but we try to be good neighbors and try to achieve that to the maximum extent practicable. Mm -hmm. um, but we are working at the Brunel Hall um, at Bridgewater State, which you uh, very well know. The just to orient yourself, you can see the railroad tracks cutting diagonally through the the site plan um, through the campus, and then our site is the red um, outline for Brunel Hall. Um, which was constructed in the, in the 60s, maybe early 70s. Um, if you can go to the next one, Brian, we'll just get a closer um, look of the site and go to the next. <laughs> Looks like maybe. we lost. Maybe. Uh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm back. You're back. <laughs> yeah, my Zoom, my Zoom just like quit on me and then came back very quickly. So uh, I'll uh, share again. Do you want to share? Oh yeah, if you want to share, Steve, in case this happens yep. again, that's fine too. Uh, here we go. Okay. okay. 
Can we see that screen? Yep. Okay. Um, and so, here, so here's the building that we're that we're talking about. Um, as Brian mentioned, we're doing uh, interior renovations of the entire building and also mm -hmm. exterior renovations, um, repointing brick, um, new windows, upgrades um, to for insulation, um, et cetera, um, within the building. Um, and as part of that that work um, on the outside, as you know, we're in um, well in buffer zones, um, and we're um, upgrading the site and as Brian mentioned the courtyard entrance area um, in the front here this is the existing entrance to Brunel Hall and then the courtyard that's just off to the right of Brunel Hall here you can see it's a sunken um, courtyard um, we're looking to rehabilitate this and and make it all level throughout um, and in the improvements that we're doing which are shown here in this um, circle where the courtyard is at Brunel Hall um, providing new uh, landscaping new walkways um, and some new stormwater infrastructure to capture roof runoff. Um, and we'll put that into um, a, a, a system at that area right there um, under the new courtyard. Um, for the existing basin that was mentioned, um, it's off here to the, to the mm, I'm gonna say to the north of the building. Um, mm -hmm. It's an existing basin that we're looking to expand. Um, you can currently see what it looks like. It's completely overgrown. Um, hasn't been maintained, and so we're looking to remove the vegetation in the basin um, and ma maintain it um, and expand it to provide um, treatment for runoff that's currently going from the parking lot into the basin um, and then discharging through existing stormwater infrastructure in Hooper. Um, like I said, we're looking to expand that um, and provide additional treatment for the existing parking lot, provide water quality um, and phosphorus treatment. This is the area behind um, Brunel Hall. We do need access back here. And as you can see, um, that location is here in the circle. Um, it currently has, I'll zoom in a little bit, currently has some existing sidewalk from the original construction. Um, we're, we're looking to remove that um, and reestablish um, the area back here with um, some more free draining material, um, acknowledging that the wetland does come very close to the building. Um, uh, and if you go at certain times of the year, like when this picture was taken, it appears that the wetland is inside the building. Um, so we're trying to improve that condition by removing the impervious area back here um, and restoring it with a little bit more free draining subsurface material gravel, um, and then uh, doing some type of treatment on the top, uh, sloping basically from this step here back towards the wetland, which is literally right here um, to provide some mitigation to prevent this water from getting into the building, which it currently does um, as we're reno performing this renovation, we wanna make sure that we're not impacting any of the new work that we're um, putting into the building here. Um, this is, uh, unfortunately our plan is rotated um, so that mm -hmm. north is to the left, um, but just to give you some, some context, this is the back area that we were just looking at in that picture. This is the courtyard area, and then this is that basin that's highlighted here and shown in this blue color here. So if I zoom in on the basin, this shows the existing extent of the basin here. Um, as you can see, we're currently, it is within the 25 foot, um, and we do need to do some work within the 25 foot. Um, and some, so it's some, some grading, uh, and then expanding the basin out further uh, in this location here. The areas for parking lot improvements that were mentioned are back here on the side. Um, it's an existing parking lot. We're creating ADA accessibility here into a new entrance um, with stairs, uh, but then a, a ramp in this location here. Uh, and then we're improving the front here. We're doing some uh, mill and overlay and restriping, and again, providing ADA access into the building with the new pedestrian ramp. And then this is the new courtyard here, where, as you can see, we're leveling it out um, and removing that sunken courtyard that's in, that's currently um, there today. Um, let's see, this is the back of the building. Just wanted to show the way the, the building, or sorry, the way the grading is in the back of the building here. There's, there's a ridge, there's a high point essentially here um, and here in general. And what it does, it prevents, it pools the water up against the building. Uh, in the back here, and it prevents it from leaving and going up to the wetland. So we're looking to regrade it so that we provide positive drainage towards the wetland this way, and then um, this way as well. There's an existing catch basin. We'll rehabilitate that. Um, 
but again, regrading and, and moving the water away from the building and towards existing infrastructure. Um, I think that is, so just to give you sort of that general overview, um, we are also looking to improve water quality by providing some still prisons in the existing um, parking lot here, which has um, two catch basins. Um, so we're looking to upgrade those to provide again, water quality and TSS removal um, as part of the renovation project. But before I let Brian get into the sort of the, the details of the, of the drainage, um, I guess I'll stop at this point if there's any questions or do you want us to continue go through the whole thing and then we can take questions. Um, commission members, anybody have any questions? I, I can wait till the end. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I just have ahead. a comment about yeah. how, how close the back is to the wetland. So yeah. that must have, I don't know, like I was there and ha was did my student teaching in that back little area and like the door went out to the back and I don't like remember it like being so close. I don't know if it's changed over time and it's. I, yeah. So, yeah, I think, um, <clears throat> I think there's a couple of things happening. I think there is, I think the biggest one is the infrastructure. Well, the biggest one is that the building was built in an area of, of very tight um, soils. Um, mm -hmm. And so that when you have these high rain events that we're having recently the, in, mm -hmm. The water's just going to hang and pool there, like it's shown here, and, and it's very slow draining. Um, in addition, there's existing drainage infrastructure just off to the left, uh, as you look at the plan, that really hasn't been maintained, um, and that I think has created issues back here, um, mm -hmm. which is the flooding. So um, we're in the, the process of maintaining it, and it's literally at this area right here mm -hmm. um, that we're looking at. And again, going to the maintenance of this basin, as you can see from the pictures, just hasn't been maintained in upkeep. There's just too much to do. Um, so when we have opportunities like this project, we'll go in and, and do the maintenance um, to make sure that things are operating. I do have operating. a question about the basin. Yeah. So that's not wetland, right? Like, like so you're going to go in and grade that. Yeah. Um, how, like, was that just a, like, sunken area that the, like, water maybe filled in and then trees grew out of it? Yeah, that yeah, exactly. It, it's one of those basins um, that were created. It was the it was the it was the um, preferred way to treat stormwater. Um, it was just very simply digging a hole, um, and yes, the the trees and vegetation just grew over just over time. So yeah, so uh, with the focus on new stormwater controls, there's an operation and maintenance plan, as you know, um, that needs to be followed to prevent this from happening or from. Mm -hmm growth taking over mm -hmm. so um yeah so that so that's why you've had that growth so we're looking to to reestablish this and, and expand it more to help treat stormwater with the latest or newer regulations that are uh, required by the state yeah great okay yeah. thanks sure brian do you want to um you want to share screen or do you want me to just keep going keep going that's fine okay go ahead yeah you want to just go to the utility plan yeah yep there we go all right so um, yeah, well, I guess we'll focus on the courtyard first. Um, so yeah, we're looking to infiltrate in the court, courtyard where we are going to be bringing in some fill for that to fill in um, the existing sunken courtyard. And we're going to pick up all the um, the stormwater that's in the, that falls in the courtyard and then also some roof drainage of, as well. Hmm. And then um, that's going to outlet to existing drainage infrastructure just in the parking lot. And um, that'll be treated uh, just through infiltration. And then in the uh, parking lot, all that infrastructure is staying as in as is. But as Steve mentioned, we are going to install some silt prison inserts into the existing catch basins just to help with water quality treatment. And like all that, uh, the like the main parking lot right where Steve is highlighting right there, that parking lot is treated uh, currently in that that goes to a Vortec stormwater quality chamber, yep, right over there before discharging into the existing wet basin. So that's the only treatment provided on site right now. Mm -hmm. um, but when we go to expand this wet basin, we're looking to um, provide some more uh, treatment of the parking lot. You can see there's that catch basin kind of in the top left-hand corner of the screen, pretty much like that darker gray area. That area is 
more or less going to drain to that catch basin and then um, discharge into the expanded wet basin. And then you can also see there's a roof drain that we're connecting from the north side of the building right there. And then, so that wet basin, the it currently it, um, overflows into a drain pipe that discharges into Hooper Street, which is just on the bottom of the page. And there's actually a 42 inch line drain line in Hooper Street existing that um, we think discharges over across Plymouth Street to the Town River and then to the Taunton River eventually. Um, but um, yeah, in the proposed condition, we would just keep that same connection, but we would increase the size of the pipe a little bit just to uh, account for that increased capacity. This Steve's drawing arrows here. Yeah, that's kind of, that's the, yeah. the general that's direction. Like I, yeah. Making them yeah. very colorful too. Yeah. yeah. Trying to. <laughs> and well, then we are, we are including um, an emergency spillway that is going to overflow into that adjacent wetland on the, um, the north side, the left side of the page, which that all ends up draining to the same uh, drain line mm -hmm. out in Hooper Street. Um, but we do contain um, stormwater in that basin in the 100-year storm without it breaching the emergency spillway. So that was kind of a design point, was um, making sure everything's contained inside the wet basin. Um, so that's it's a true emergency spillway. Um, maybe like back-to-back -back storms and, and whatnot. Um, and then I guess kind of panning up to the top of the page, um, you can see we have some, um, some kind of uh, like pipe and stone that are gonna be high up in the soil. Um, yep, yeah, so we're gonna have four of them going parallel uh, east to west. And then that one that's kind of like the header pipe that goes along the walkway. And we're hoping that's gonna help alleviate some of the saturated soil conditions out back there um, that Bridgewater State uh, encounters during the rainy seasons. And uh, as, as you saw in that picture that Steve shared earlier, the not only in the in the way back does it get wet, but that those soils out here do get uh, moist and saturated during the rainy seasons. So we're hoping that that will help a little bit with that. And that will we'll in include some work in the 50 to 100 foot buffer um and then you can see on the yeah where steve's highlighting right now we're also uh proposing a kind of it's kind of a perimeter drain it's going to be same thing where it's going to be like high up in the in the soils to kind of take all that um that high ground water that's in the that's getting caught up in that upper layer of soil drain, yeah. and yeah and that's gonna all discharge over to existing drainage infrastructure on the right side of the screen where steve was going to and then just in that landscaped area right above, um, or I guess, yeah, right above Steve's cursor, we're also proposing um, similar drainage, the perforated pipe and stone. And that all discharges to, a, to a, um, a drainage system that eventually goes to Hooper Street. So everything goes to Hooper Street. Okay. And then actually we are, um, to, to meet the water quality um, we are proposing a water quality structure right where the end of that arrow is that Steve just drew. And that's going to primarily treat uh, roof runoff before it discharges into Hooper Street. And with all this, we, we do meet um, the TSS removal for a redevelopment of 86%. And then phosphorus, uh, we are at 40, 54%. And, and so, yeah, I guess um, yeah. yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. And then, sorry, just to to add, we're also um, upgrading the water service to the building, so new, new domestic and new fire protection, and then a line going out to the new hydrant, which is shown right here, uh, in this piece right here. Um, sorry, I do need to point out, and I neglected to mention this: they're putting in a temporary trailer as part of this work, um, to to uh, for classrooms or for for instruction. Um, and so the, the idea is to place it in this area outside the 100 foot buffer and use the, the area here for, um, for access. Um, but just wanted to point that out that we're, we're doing that, um, but it is outside the 100 foot buffer zone. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot of work. Thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of work. So, it, I, so I will share, as long as I've been at Niche, that the state Bridgewater have come before or asked us 
to join in on studies at, at Brno Hall, and I've been involved with at least two of them, and I think there's been more. So it's it's project in a long time that's been um, in the works, and they're okay. finally putting into action. Yeah, exactly. Um, four questions. Uh, we did receive comments from the town engineer. Um, we've updated our plans, and you're seeing the updated plans here. But once uh, we before we resubmitted, we wanted to hear from the commission and get comments from you um, in case there were additional comments that we needed to incorporate into the plans. OK. All right. Thank you. So, sure. Marilyn, did you you said you were going to hold your comments, questions? Yep. I was just looking at the town engineers comments. Um, they, they have issues out there. So, I mean, this is an improvement, um, you know, definitely the basin was not maintained and, and you know so they're going to have to get the pitches back up and and get the drainage flowing in the right direction so at this point i really don't see any major concerns i think they've got a well um, thought out and well done plan mm -hmm. and um it's also a safety issue when you get that much water mm -hmm. yep. so um yeah they definitely look like they're gonna you know get those grades to where they need to be and, and get, it, get the pitch going right for the um basins um it, to to my knowledge i uh, basins, existing basins do not fall under the Wetlands Protection Act. So that's an existing basin that's been out there for how long? Like it's so that's not really under yeah. our jurisdiction. Yep. It's a, it's a, you know, basins and ponds um, are exempt from that. So at this point, I'm not seeing anything popping out at me. Anybody else? Nope. Harry? I'm all set. Mark? Uh, I think it looks good, but um, I was just wondering is that? So the stormwater basin, um, the the new the enlarged one, will that be holding water for? Um, yeah, that, exactly. Yeah. Um, Seventy two hours, and is there going to be a fence around it? There, there is currently a fence around it. We will extend the fence around it um, to in case there is standing water. So it is a wet basin. So it is designed to sort of normalize into. I'm going to call it more of like a wetland type of feature, but that doesn't mean that. Uh, maintenance doesn't happen, and it doesn't mean that you can't put in mosquito controls or do something for mosquito controls. And uh, another question is um, that that whole back area. I know this this plan doesn't get it, but that whole back area right be behind Burnell there, there's just the big strip of in between Burnell and the the football field. There's a whole yeah. big strip of 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 woodlands and stuff like that. I know this plan doesn't do it, but are they, is there any plans in the future for them to? remove all the invasive plants in that area? I think I think that's a, uh, there's there was talk of it. Um, I think the scope of this project just became too big because we were looking to do something like that um, for this project, but we decided to hold off and wait there. I think there are other projects coming down from Bridgewater that will will tackle this area here. We're just is not that, there yet. Yeah, that would be, be a good case, uh, a case study and in, in whether or not that impacts the the um, the other, you know, flooding hazards on your site, whether or mm. not the invasive plants are having any impact on um, stormwater infiltration up there. But I'm just yeah. to bring it up as, you know, as a, as a side. So yeah. nothing else. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Mark. The only other question I think that I would have, and it uh, only because we hear it in every every site plan that's doing any kind of construction, what kind of like sediment control do you put something in the back as best you can? Like, I don't even yeah. do that because it's like right there. Yeah, I, I, we will put something back here. Um, and because they, as I said before, because they are replacing windows and reappointing the brick that they, they will pass, um, you know, the lulls through here. Um, mm -hmm. And if it does, if we are in this condition, that's wet, we've, um, in our plan, we've asked or, or noted that they should put down swamp mats or something mats. similar to yeah, prevent that similar, from yeah. being, yeah, from being churned up. Um, and obviously that they would have to restore that back to the condition that that we want it to be for the, especially if they have to go into the wetland because we are so close. So right. we do show erosion control back there, understanding they're going to have to bring equipment and it'll be a challenge. And hopefully up until recently, that dry weather that we had, if we have that, it just makes things easier. And so we'll hope for yeah. that when we get going. Yep. Okay. One last question. Um, you know, so that so I believe you mentioned it that you're going to have an ONA uh, maintenance plan going forward, so that this will be maintained and not happen again. And yeah, right, correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah, that that's in the stormwater report that we submitted as part of the application, which I believe was reviewed by engineering. Um, I guess the good thing is that Niche Engineering is working with Bridgewater State on their MS4 requirements. So we've been mapping um, and and um, 
noting maintenance uh, of the the school's infrastructure, drainage infrastructure, um, over the past two three years, and Brian's been a, a part of that. So this will get added to um, to the list of you know uh, inspections and and maintenance. Okay, and, so you'll have a good O and M plan. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and also I'll add to that uh, Bridgewater State's been much more pro proactive in maintaining their existing like more or their more newer basins since the MS4 came out. So I don't think it'll be a problem with maintaining this one in the future. Yeah, if you don't maintain them, it'll last. <laughs> yeah, exact, exactly. Yep. <clears throat> okay. okay, great. Are there any abutters that are on that have any questions or concerns? Can you raise your, raise your hand, wave at Nicole, or use the raise your hand feature that's at the bottom of the Zoom page? I think you might be able to stop sharing your screen. I was okay. going to say that if you didn't mind. <laughs> uh, sorry, here we go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see anyone at this time. Okay, great. Um, so with that, with no other questions or comments, do we um, have a motion to close the hearing? I would make a motion to close notice of intent. It's 66 HOOPA map 35, lot 22, 24, 35, 85. So, uh, I'm sorry, may I just interject? Just, um, are you okay to close without receiving, without closing out with engineering? I just want to make sure we don't go too far. I mean, we've got the re I've got the report here. We can close. We don't have to approve. But I mean, if okay. they're going to come back with any other changes, we can. I mean, we can leave it open if you want. Um, I, I'm pretty confident that we can address, and I think we have addressed their comments. Um, so yeah, if we can, if we can close the hearing, and and if you want to order, uh, sorry, vote in the order of conditions, we'd be okay with that. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at what Greg sent out. Uh, you know, you've got your plants and stuff like that, so. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, 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 we make the motion to close in the hearing on notice um, of intent for 66 Hoopa map 35, 22, 24, 35, 35. Second. Thank you. Uh, roll call vote. Marilyn? Aye. Harry? Aye. Ma Mark? Aye. Eileen? Aye. And myself, Wendy? Aye. Um, so what are we doing? Are we making a motion to uh, approve it, continue it? We can make a motion if they're comfortable. I mean, I'm comfortable with it. If, uh, let's see what the rest can make a motion to approve it. And then any updates or changes, they go into special order of conditions. But I think, did planning board close itself? Uh, we don't have to go in front of planning board. Oh, you don't have to go in front of planning board? No. Nope. So unless the town engineer, which we can condition, if the town engineer suggests anything else, we have 21 days that we can condition it. So okay. thoughts on okay. anybody else? Okay, I'm fine with that. I mean, I... The plan looks great. They've put a lot of work into it, effort and whatnot. So yeah. are other people okay with that? Yes, I am. Okay. Okay. Um, so then <clears throat> second. Do we have a second? Oh, did you make make the motion? Yep. I made the motion and then with any updates from the engineer, and we could always condition that. Oh, okay. Second. Thanks, Harry. <laughs> so with that, we have a roll call vote. Marilyn? Aye. Eileen? Aye. Harry? Aye. Mark? Aye. And myself? Aye. All right, gentlemen. Thank you. Good Thank luck. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take, Take care. care. You also. Next up on the new business, we have a notice of intent for 674 Summer Street, map 63, lot 46. Applicant representative is Silver Engineering PC. DP file number is SE 116 1555. And <clears throat> the legal ad, I have to zoom in on this, Hold on. is uh, Bridgewater, just making sure, am I reading 674, right? Yep. Okay. 674 Summer Street, legal notice, public hearing notice, Conservation Commission, Bridgewater, Massachusetts. In accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 in the Town of Bridgewater Local Bylaw, the Bridgewater Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, September 26, 2024, at 5.30 p.m. for review of a notice of intent. The public hearing will be held as a virtual meeting over Zoom. A link and instructions to participate in the meeting will follow and be posted to the calendar on the town's website at www.bridgewaterma.org, 
The proposed work is construction of an addition with associated grading within the buffer zone to bordering vegetative wetlands. Property is identified as Assessors Map 63, Lot 46, 674 Summer Street. All interested persons are encouraged to attend. And we received the green cards on that also. So, Rebecca Baptista, you are up. I am up and way more prepared. Okay. Um, we have a single family home on Summer Street, just south of Conant. Um, and they're looking to put the addition of a garage, a three season room, breezeway, minor improvements to their, their living here. Um, we have a wetland line that was flagged by Ken and located by survey. We've added the 25 foot no touch. We're outside of that. We had erosion control. Their setback to the building is past the 50, so they're all in compliance there. Um, it's kind of straightforward, except for all of this existing uh, non-conforming that we're just... Mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah, so I can zoom in. We're going to add a little bit more asphalt here to extend the driveway so they can get into their garage, uh, a little bit of grading so that they can exit outside into the lawn and a proposed pool. Um, with a little bit of grading around that as well. Um, I don't know if the commission had more comments, questions, concerns. It's a single family home looking for an addition. Okay. Um, the only thing that I, and it's the existing. So the woodshed and the shed, that's like right at the 25 foot. And we went through this with another property um, that, you know, maybe in a special order of conditions when that, collapses it stays it gets cleaned up and nothing gets built in its place but that's for later that's my only thought really for right now uh anybody else Marilyn sorry I had a mute for a minute awesome. um yeah that that same thought came to me Wendy I, I just I mean the proposed area looks well out of any wetland I, I don't know, I'd probably, probably just may take a quick look, but I'm even toying with it. If that's necessary, it looks far enough back. That's really all I have at the moment. Is, is that an in-ground pool? No. Above them. Or it will be above. Yep. Um, Eileen or Harry, do you have any questions or concerns or comments? I'm all set. Sorry, I was muted. Um, no, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Those sheds are in a tough area, though. Are the flags still out there, Nicole? You mean Rebecca? I mean Me Rebecca, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ken just did it over the summer, so they should still be out there. Let me look. When did he go? Um, Is there any flag in near the pool and, pa and patio stuff? Like he went out in June, so they should still be out there. Okay. Yeah. What well, do you want to see? I probably have pictures of the site. Yeah. Okay. Do you have actual pictures? Uh, our surveyor takes pictures. Let me see if anyone helps. Let's see. That's all the front. It's a beautiful front, but we're not interested in the front. Um. Okay. So let's start with this one, which is the side. Okay. You can see the playground. Okay. So. Hang on, we're going to keep walking around. Here's more of the back, the shed area, concrete in between to a little playhouse. This is the chicken coop that we saw, the shed. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, let's see. So this is the swing set you saw in the um, site, the shed, the wood pile right back here. Let me go back to the plan so we can see it again. So we're looking playground, woodshed in the back. We're looking this way. Okay. Well, that shed's not going anywhere for some years. Yeah. Uh, let's keep going. I got the back of the house, which doesn't tell a good story. The side of the house doesn't tell a good story. Okay, let's go. This one is looking at that circular patio area. You can see... Things flags. 
all around it. I'll go back to the plan so we can see where this is. Here's all the flags. Yeah, they put that in, I think. Yeah. yeah inside the, inside the 25 foot. That's definitely inside the 25 foot, yeah. Yeah. Um, but the pool would be a little bit more. The pool is going to be outside. Of to the left, yeah, or yeah. back, yeah. Closer to the building outside the 25. Um, I don't know how long these homeowners have been here. I wonder. I don't think that they're the original people. Yeah, I was going to say, could that have been there and then they bought it? Would, could they have... Yeah, that looks it, pretty it, new. It is existing mm -hmm. at this point. Um, yeah, I know. I'm just making a comment on it. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, but it, the, the visuals are definitely helpful, Rebecca, and it kind of puts into perspective that it's going to be past that line. And then, like, you know, the. Um, I'm calling everybody different names tonight. Like Wendy brought up, we would have to condition it the same way. Like, you know, no more putting anything. If those deep gardens and stuff come down, the patio, the sheds, they don't go back up. Right. Oh, I do have a picture of the garden, uh, if that makes a difference. But, <laughs> uh, I like gardens, but it's getting late. <laughs> it is. It is. Okay. Well, you know, it, there you go. It's a garden. Yeah, oh, that's good. nice. They yeah. must not have woodchucks. <laughs> and they have a composter and everything. Okay. So they're oh, trying good. To try it. It's not a building. Yeah, not a building. Very good. Okay. There you go. All right. Um. So did we ask? Did I? Did I ask if anybody had any questions or concerns already? The brain's needing food. <laughs> uh, all right. Same same condition thing. Like. Okay. The visual was a big help. I'm sorry. The visual was a big help. Thank you, Rebecca. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. Um, are there any abutters on that have any questions, concerns, or comments? You can raise your hand at Nicole, or you can use the raise your hand feature at the bottom of the Zoom page. I don't see anything at this time. Excellent. Um, with that, do we have enough info to close the hearing? I, I got a question. Um, are we setting a bad precedent by just allowing all these uh, things to be added into the um, the buffer? Because they seem like they've been added in the past five years. No, this isn't from 20 or 30 years ago. Um, yeah, I don't have an answer for that. I don't know at what you point. You really can't tell. You can't. They look. Yeah, you can't. We don't, we don't know when they were added. I can tell. You can tell from uh, Google Earth. You can see what things were added and which things weren't added. You got any information on it? On Google Earth? No, on, on that property. I and whether or not the people that are living there are actually the ones that put it up or not. Like you, you can you can scroll through different timelines on Google Earth and you can see you can see that that patio wasn't there in 2018. But it could be different owners, is what we're saying. So these owners seem to be doing the right thing by filing the notice of intent, or otherwise they'd be doing the same thing they did with the other stuff closest. So, I mean, it's a good point, but I mean, I don't know, if, Rebecca, you have the answer if they're new owners, old owners, or? Well, you can look at the assessor records to see who owned it when. Yeah, I don't go that far. I'm wetlands. <laughs> yeah. We should go that far, though. If not, I, that's a different department. <laughs> Well, I mean, I understand. I understand what Mark's saying because it's kind of frustrating. It's the second one in a couple of months that's come across, but the other one was like really old. This isn't that old. But if we're looking at what is before us right now and we put into the order of conditions anything that, you know, breaks down, falls apart, that nothing gets replaced in that area because it's inside the 25 foot. That's, I feel like that's what we can do at this particular Right, point. that's exactly what I was saying too. It's already existing, it's in the 25 foot. What they're proposing is outside the 25 foot. So, you know, we're not gonna penalize them for something that's already there that they might not have been a part of, we don't know. But on this filing specifically, it is outside the 25 foot. And we can say that that stuff inside the 25 foot does not get replaced. The house, was built, the house was built in 96 and these people bought it in 2017. Well, if I can add, because I know I've, I've seen other towns and how they handle these things and your, your bylaws are soon to be improved. So um, for instance, East Bridgewater, um, they make you put those medallions and maybe it's not at the 25 foot no touch that they have as well, but at the wetland and informs the future people that you have this 
resource that you have to watch out for. So you mm -hmm. can't always fix the problems that you have now, but you can try to minimize oh, the future. Yep. Um, and sometimes having something in perpetuity recorded with all the new homeowners is something I've seen as well, although I haven't seen it in Bridgewater. Um, it's it's tough to undo when you don't know when it was done. There's no building permit pulled for a patio. That's the other thing too. There's no paper trail. Yeah. So it doesn't fix us now, Mark, but hopefully uh, some changes in the future can work that out for you. Yep. Okay. That sounds good. Thanks for that info. Um. So did we close it? Oh, no, Mark had a question. So with that being answered and spoken about, do we have enough information that we can close the hearing? Was it about it? Uh, anybody on the um, no, meeting? Nobody. Nobody raised hand? Okay. All right, so um, I'll make a motion to uh, close notice of intent 674 Summer Street Map 63, Lot 46. All right. Second. Thank you. Uh, roll call vote. Harry? Aye. Eileen? Aye. Marilyn? Aye. Mark? Aye. Myself? Aye. And do we have a motion to approve? I make motion to approve 674 Summer Street Map 63, Lot 46, with special conditions that no further um, building in the 25 foot once those uh, things come down or any other further activity is allowed in there. And I don't know, some maybe up for discussion with some other members. I do like some of the thoughts that um, Rebecca has on little things putting out there, just as a reminder. But definitely condition no further activity in the 25 foot with the maintenance. But I mean, with those things once they're done. That sounds good. Do we have a second for that? Thank you. Thanks. Um, roll call vote, Marilyn? Aye. Mark? Aye. Eileen? Aye. Harry? Aye. And myself, Wendy? Aye. Thank you. Okay, all set. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, next up, moving on, we have a request for determination of applicability for 1016 South Street, Map 88, Lot 12. The representative applicant is Collins Engineering. Um, do I don't have a file number on this, so it, who's on? Um, on oh, we don't. Do we need one for no, an RDA? No, okay, there's no DEB you. file number on this. Okay. So, can you just state your name for the record? Sure. Oh, do I, I have a it. thing? Do I have to read anything? I'm sorry. Yes. It's a newspaper article. Yeah. Advertisement. Uh, I have so many things up on my thing right now. Where am I? 1016? Yep. Right? Okay. Yep. I got it. Just, you know, everything's a process. <laughs> um. Well, we got all the green cards. Um. So we have 1016 South Street, Bridgewater, legal notice, notice of public hearing, Conservation Commission, Bridgewater, Massachusetts, in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40 in the Town of Bridgewater Local Wetland Bylaw. Bridgewater Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on September 26, 2024, for a request for determination of applicability filed by Judy, Julie uh, Giberti. The applicant proposes to upgrade a residential septic system. The property is owned by Julie Giberti and is located at 1016 South Street, Bridgewater, Mass., Map 88, Parcel 12. Please contact the Bridgewater Conservation Office at 508-697-0950 for time and location or link for virtual participation. All interested parties are encouraged to attend. Agenda can be found at www.bridgewaterma.org at least 48 hours prior to the meeting date. And I'm sorry if I pronounced Julie's last name incorrectly. So I'm all set. All right. Good evening, everyone. My name's Dave Kleiner from Cullen Civil Engineering Group. Um, and we're here for a septic repair um, for the 1016 South Street in Bridgewater. Um, that's right across from Flag Street. Uh, it's the one with the long driveway, if you're familiar with that area. Uh, there's a long driveway into the to the residential house, and if I can share, I can show you the sure. plan. You can see this up on the screen. Yep. Well, oh, uh, we did. All right. So 
This is the law at the driveway coming No, out. it just went away. Okay, yeah. hold on. Hold on. Can you see it now? Yes. Yep. Okay. So uh, the green line is the wetland line delineated by Brooke Monroe. That was done in July. Uh, the orange line here is the 50-foot buffer. The purple line is the 100-foot buffer. And if we zoom into the house area, um, you can see that the existing tank and the existing system, several systems in stone, are leaching into the 100-foot buffer. We want to pull the, the entire system outside the 100-foot buffer. We are working within the 100-foot buffer for a pump and some uh, very small grading. Uh, we do propose a, a, a erosion control fence that's going to start outside the 100 foot along the stone wall, and it's going to move around the limit of work, come within 71 feet of the wetlands, and then move out of the 100 foot buffer to the back of the house around the construction area. The, um, the system consists of a tank down to a pump that's inside the 50, and then, I mean, inside the 100, and then outside the 100 for a septic system. Um, the property itself is not in an ACEC, it's not in a flood zone, and it's not in a um, critical area uh, for estimated habitat. Mm. It is all uh, predisturbed uh, lawn area. You can see it's pretty steep here. Uh, the reason, the only reason we put the pump in the uh, in the hundred foot buffer is because we can only have so much fill over the pump. If we put it outside the hundred, we would have there would not be Title Five, so we're kind of forced to have it inside that area. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> looks pretty straightforward to me. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Um, no, all good with Board of Health, Eric Benel. The Board of Health has approved the plan. Okay. Was it a, was it a failed system, you said? or It, it is a failed system. Okay. Um, I, I've got, it's a, you're also at 100. What, what better could we ask for? <laughs> I know. Yeah, minimal work, you know, doing it. I got no issue. Um, Eileen, do you have any? No, I'm good. Mark? No. Harry? All set. Okay, and myself too. I'm all set. Thank you, David. Um, do we, oh, are there any abutters that have any <clears throat> questions or comments, concerns? You can raise your hand at Nicole or use the raise your hand feature at the bottom of the screen. I'm not seeing any. Okay, excellent. Do we have enough information um, that we can make a motion to close the hearing? I would make a motion to uh, to close request for determination on 116, I mean, 1016 South Street, map 88, lot 12. Thank you. A second? Not good. Thank you. Uh, roll call vote. Marilyn? Aye. <clears throat> Eileen? Aye. Mark? Aye. Harry? Aye. And myself, Wendy? Aye. Right. Thank you. All right. You're oh, welcome. Hold on. We, we still got to make a motion to issue a negative determination on your request of determination. That's right. <laughs> oh, right. So oh, yeah. Right. I'm so used to the notice of intent. I don't even know. So I would make a motion to uh, to Thank issue you. a negative determination on 1016 South Street map um, 80. I just put a line through it. 88, lot 12. <laughs> Do we have a second? Uh, and with that, a roll call vote, Marilyn? Aye. Um, Eileen? Aye. Harry? Aye. Mark? Aye. And myself, Wendy? Aye. All right, now you're all set, David. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. I'm going. <laughs> Thanks. Wow, okay. Um, next up, we have a notice of intent for zero Winter Street, map 75, lot 21 and 93. The applicant representative is Silva Engineering Associates. Um, I do not have the file number in front of me with this one, but we must have it. Where am I? On, DE, on the yeah. DEP file number you're looking for? 1557. Yeah. What is it? 116-1557. I saw that somewhere. Uh, okay, and the legal ad, the green cards were... My screen doesn't want to get bigger on me. I... I have stuff on one computer, and there we go. Um, okay, so Bridgewater, Zero Winter Street, Legal Notice, Public Hearing Notice, Conservation Commission, Bridgewater, Mass. In accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, 
I should have this all down like in my head, but that's not happening. Uh, chapter 131, section 40 in the town of Bridgewater local bylaw, the Bridgewater Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Thursday, September 26, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. for review of a notice of intent. Public hearing will be held as a virtual meeting over Zoom. A link and instructions to participate in the meeting will follow and be posted to the calendar on the town's website at www.bridgewaterma.org. The proposed work is a construction of a drainage out, outfall with associated grading within the buffer zone to bordering vegetative wetlands. The property is identified as Assessors Map 75, Lots 21 and 93, Zero Winter Street. All interested persons are encouraged to attend. And with that, you are up. Oh, again. 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 All right. So this is the one that had the comment, but let me start at the beginning. Um, we have a subdivision off of mm -hmm. uh, Winter Street. It's a four lot subdivision. So it comes under minimal requirements for the town of Bridgewater, uh, less pavement, no curbs, country drainage, swales along the side. Um, we've been, but the, the reason that DEP flagged it as of interest was because we are in the zone two here. Okay, so. Um, Which is a water. The protection district for the water. Yep, for the mm -hmm. drinking water. Yep. Um, so we have an existing conditions. Um, we did test pits, we did soils. Um, we have a lot of terrain changing in the front here. Um, we have the wetlands in the back, uh, and there's some wetlands off to the side here. Um, again, four lots, uh, one of them being super oversized because the zoning line cuts through it. So right now, the only buildable area for a house is actually over here. So uh, the owner of lot one will get a nice big extra piece of land just to hang out. It's great. I think it's going to be lovely. Um, so we have a lot of slope right here in the beginning. And so the town engineer requested check dams along with the stone swale uh, every 50 feet or so to slow the water down. Um, and we we come down the road and then we have some infiltration in here. And then a lot of the site grading will take some uh, a swale on the side between two house lots and more infiltration inside the right of way. And then this is the part that's of interest for the commission. The discharge out of this basin comes through and it's this swale-like channel so that we can get down to the lower elevations because there's a lot of terrain here to get through. So in this area here, we'll be taking the 68. We'll be taking, let's see, 69, 70, 70, 70, 70, 75. We're taking a 75 down to a 68 in this area here so we can get down to these lower elevations. Why here? It was the most direct route instead of a long path clearing more land than we needed to. Um, I can keep going. A lot of this will need to be graded in order to collect and convey. We have to fill this low spot so that we can actually get the water into the swale. And so when the houses are built, they have positive drainage to the system and out to the wetlands that we have over here. Um, we did have this recently flagged by Ken Thompson. Uh, within the last year, I could look for the date he did it, but I'll continue the story first. Um, so we have some lot grading, and we have that lovely note that says the uh, lot one will have to come before the commission because it is in front, it is within the hundred foot of this wetland here. The other three lots are all on the upland side of things, and they shouldn't interfere with any of the other wetlands and the buffers. So you probably won't be seeing lot two, three, and four, but you'll be seeing lot one in the future. Um, let's see, we did our stormwater, we compared our pre and post, the town engineer reviewed everything, he was satisfied with our 90% pre, he was satisfied with, um, most of the things that we had designed for, so then we get into the last DEP comment that said, you didn't give us a stormwater report, and she was right, I revised it, I submitted the stormwater report, which checked off all the 10 standards, and quantified the, the the standards for her. Um, what I believe she's trying to say is the BMPs need to be infiltration, which we have. Um, we do have the infiltration all in here. But what I didn't call out enough was the TSS removal. Because the these channels, these stone channels are not in a category that is convenient for their little checklist, 
I didn't call it out as 44%. So what I'm going to do in this last revision with the town engineer is I'm going to wrap this, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap it. So it acts like a filtration, like a vegetative filter strip. And I think that'll satisfy her requirement or her little nudge that I didn't meet something. I didn't get the TSS at 44% prior to infiltrating. So with wrapping this stone trench, it'll act like the vegetative filter strip. It'll clean the water before it gets down into the infiltration area. Now it's not a high traffic area, but you never know. So at least you'll have the 44% prior to infiltration. Um, we did get the town planning board to approve it and issue the orders. What the town has to do next is review the condition of approval plan. So I have one more chance to add this change to the plan and have the town engineer review it. And that's what I plan on doing. I'm showing them a detail how we're gonna wrap this so that it filters mm -hmm. any storm water before it infiltrates. And I think that should check off that box that um, was, was requested by DEP to look at. Um, other than that, uh, it's a standard four lot subdivision in Bridgewater with four lots and country drainage. And it went way over there. I'm going, oh, you're muted, Wendy. You're muted. Yeah. Thank you. You're I welcome. The train was going by and I was oh, it's loud. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that's a lot. Does anybody have any questions or concerns? Um, Rebecca, this is the other side of Winter Street, right? I can't really, I'm just trying to get my bearings. Yeah, this, I'll go back to the locust. This is behind the Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, no, the Dunkin' Donuts is on this side. So this is behind CNT and behind, um, yeah, that's the old picket land. Okay. Yes. Thank you. The old picket land. Yes. Okay. Got behind CNT and then behind McKinnon and yeah. behind Zero Bedford for Alfred. Got it. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that's, that's good. I was I was afraid it was the old dump ah, on the other side. No, right? No. No. Yeah. No, that's a good good piece of land. I believe. I don't know how those soils are, but uh, not bad. Larry did some test pits. He said there's actually a bench somewhere in here. He sat in it and oh, well, he was doing his his perk test, his test pits. Yeah, I remember it being kind of sandy looking, but I wasn't sure how it was down low. Yeah, yeah no, it was decent. Huh. Okay. Um, anybody else have any questions? So I believe we just got the storm water report on this. I, I haven't had a chance to look at it. Um and, and uh Rebecca, did you say they were gonna do separate notices of intent? I know some houses are not only one house, only one house, lot one. Only that one that's closest the to the wetland. Yeah, the others are not close enough to the wetland to okay. are Ken's flag still out there? They should be. Yeah, he just did it. Um I say just did it. It feels like yesterday. Hang on. He did it July. in um March 2023. Yeah, they should still be out there. Or at least the ones that we're asking for. I'm only asking right now for I believe the ones near the discharge. Because I didn't want to get these approved if it was going to sit for two years, you know. So, I'd yeah, so you're coming one, back on that, right? I'd rather have this one come back with a fresh yeah. line if needed, right? Okay. This is not in the aquifer, right? This is in the aquifer. That's why DEP is... made the comment to uh, clean it up a little bit better. Okay. So I know I need to review the storm water. I'm probably going to shoot out there and just look at the flagging. Um, if any, you know, if you want to join me, Rebecca, or we can go individually. But um, we've we've got to do that anyway. We just got the information in. So um, and then you're going to update us with any changes, is what I heard, correct? There should be no changes other than the one I just described. You have the last plan set that planning board has. You have the last drainage that I think the planning board has. <sighs> It was just something that you said about the condition for something. It was the stormwater people. checklist that, that few people. Oh, the checklist. That's all she was missing was was that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I did see that, but you provided it because we got yep. the stormwater report. So you and obviously they gave you a number, so you were good in that department. Yep. They had okay. a, the planning board had the drainage evaluation. You probably should have had it when we submitted, but as for the checklist report, yeah, that's what I just did. Okay. All so, right. Yeah, that was one of my questions with uh, DEP, but okay, all good there. 
All right, I got no further questions. All right, do we have any about us that are on that have any questions, concerns, or comments for this property? Nicole, I'm just making sure that you're still with us and not asleep. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Well, you don't have to talk that much, so I'm just making sure. I know, I know. Don't you worry. I'm still here. I'm with you. Uh, nope, I don't see anybody raising their hand, and I, I don't have anything in the chat. Okay, thanks. So do we want to close the hearing? We have enough information. No, we can't close the hearing. We haven't even looked at the stormwater, and we're going to go out and look at the line. Um, okay, so we just want a motion to continue. Yeah, Rebecca, um, you good with like one meeting continuance or? This is for you to look at the line. I'm I'm content. DEP will be happy with what I'm going to revise and the town will will go. Planning board will be fine with it. Okay. All right. Then I'm good with that. So um, she's good with one continuance. So uh, I believe our next meeting is October 10th. You can yeah. um, request uh, where are we? notice of intent zero winter, map 75, lot 2193 for um, a continuance to October 10th. Okay. Second, please. Second. Thank you. Um, and roll call vote, Marilyn. Aye. Mark. Aye. Eileen. Aye. Harry. Aye. And myself, Wendy. Aye. Um, right, we'll will, see you you a, will you let me know if it's a quorum walk so I can, or is it just going to be individual? I just want to give the landowners a heads up. It might be one or two. I I'm like not available until three now, unless people anybody can go after. So. I'd like to go. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, Nicole, can keep me posted that way. There, I can. I, I know if you want me there too, just that's fine. If Nicole doesn't mind, Eileen, do you want to get out there? I know you said you know the area, or do you want to? Yeah. Get... No, I know the area. I'll go. You'll go. Okay. All right. So yeah, we can post a quorum then, and Rebecca, you can meet us out there. All right. Okay. All right. By the next meeting, I'll have everything that just came in the other day so, um, reviewed. Thank you. No problem. Are you all done now, Rebecca? Oh, uh, yeah, you have a few more for me later, but I don't need to be here for that. Okay. There's 354 right. Street, the driveway. Yeah, the COC. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Did Thanks. we take a roll call vote on the continuance? We did, right? <laughs> yeah, we did. I think we did. I don't, I don't, think, I don't know. I don't know. Do we yeah, we did. We you did, because I did Eileen and Mark. I, I mean, <laughs> yes, we did. Yes, you did. Right. You can all just say I very quickly anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so last up, uh, Marilyn, is the one that I don't have. Yeah, you don't have. I'll read it for you. Request. It was added to the agenda. Request for determination, 80 Spring Street, Map 21, Lot 167, Applicant Re Representative of the Town of Bridgewater. Um, I am just going to abstain from this um, request for determination as a notice to you, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, is it an NOI? I didn't hear what you said. It is an RDA. It's an RDA. So I, oh, but do I? I don't know if I have Nicole you might need to help me out because I don't know if I have a legal ad you should I think it was in that file let me look for you mm -hmm. I don't see it I'm looking too on the I see the green cards. Is it underneath the green? And card? I see the notice of public hearing that was in the uh, submittal package. Would you like me to read it and then I'll abstain? Yeah, because I don't, uh, unless okay. it's I'll, under. I'll, I'll open ahead. it. I'm just All right, thanks. In accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, in the town of Bridgewater, local wetland bylaw, and the Bridgewater Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on September 26, 2024, for a request of determination of applicability filed by the town of Bridgewater's engineering division of the DPW. The applicant proposes to construct a small pavilion within the buffer zone of a regulated natural resource area subject to protection. The property is owned by the town of Bridgewater and is located at 80 Spring Street, Assessor Map 21, parcel. 
Brussels, 167. Please contact the Bridgewater Conservation Office at 508-697-0950 um, for time and location and link of virtual participation. All interested parties are encouraged to attend. Notice was public in the Enterprise of September 12th, 2024. You are now open, Madam Chair. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Um, so is the representative on for 80 Spring Street? I forget who you said it was, Marilyn. So it's the town. Oh, it's the town. Yep, it's the town. So no, there isn't anyone here. Um, but Bob uh looked over this project um and he didn't see any issue with it. So if you guys have any comments, feel free. Um, but he suspected this one would be relatively easy to go through. Okay. Do you have information on it then? I don't pull anything up anymore. I don't. I don't have anything to pull up. Okay, so um, I don't know how. How can we make a negative determination if we don't even know what we're voting? So, well, it should be in the packet. Let me pull it. Let me see. Hold on. Um, pull, if you can share your screen, it is. That's what I'm going to try to grab. Is at least the uh. The plans are in the are in the 926 packet. Yep, yep, yep. And Maryland, uh, yeah, and then this is for the pavilion over. You guys know where BTV is? Yep. So back there, they're restoring a lot of, um, they're kind of fixing up the area, restoring it, making it nice for people to go to. There's a canoe launch down there and everything. So this is just, bless me. Excuse me, I mean, uh, this is just an improvement to be made down there. <clears throat> so there'll be a pavilion built right here okay and there's already a little path that goes down there um i don't know if you've been been out there but it looks like it's partially in the 100 foot buffer zone and partially out you say bte is that what hosey's was BTV. Uh, it's right near uh, the bagel place. Right behind, right in between Morris Real Estate and um, the old breakfast place there. Brianna. Yeah, I can't be honest. And Hosey's. Hosey's. Yep, right. so it's just to put a little pavilion right here for the community, um, for this area. And then there, there used to be a canoe launch, I believe, down here. It's pretty steep, but I know that they've just been cleaning up the area um, and the town's, you know, helping them in those efforts just to clean up there to make this a little area that more residents can use and have um, accessibility to. Okay. So this is just to show so you the, the town's time to clean up. It's just whether or not it's going to impact. It's the, just this wetlands. right here. This is what and you care about. That. Yep. Okay. It's just this right here. And right it's, now it's just a parking lot. Yeah. And I think back here is just dirt. Yep. All dirt. Yeah. Down the end. All so right. right here is pretty much what's in your jurisdiction. If you take issue with it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do we have enough information to close the hearing? Maryland's I, out, so I'm relying on other people. I mean, do we have anything from the town um, engineer? He's the one who submitted it, so he reviewed it and made sure that the location and everything that was being done around it was proper and uh, abides by the Wetland Protection Act and the town bylaws. Was there a cover letter? Um, they're probably hold on. Let's see, we and this is what we got today, right? We just got yep. this. Yep, this is the other one that. This was the one that I didn't have all the documents for it, um, but it's just that one plan, and this is just his RDA filing. <sighs> so right here is what the project, project proposed to construct a pavilion on a slab or sauna tube foundation, mostly outside. I can't. Mostly outside the 100-foot buffer power to the pavilion supply via an electric conduct. Conduit from the BTV building. The project also has future plans to convert areas that are currently paved into lawn areas within the buffer. Okay. So if they, in the future, do any other work, they'll be back. It's on land. It, all the work that's being proposed is currently on land that is disturbed. Got it. And this is all, this is right on the town river, right? This is. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's up. If you if you've been out there, it's up a pretty steep, I want to say cliff. Yeah. So there is plenty of area away from it. Um, this is his little notification that he puts, but this is what they send to every. So he does he does an extra butter notification on the side from what's required, and this is what he sends. Oh, okay. To all the abutters. Yeah, just letting them know what's going on. So what's it's an, on? Yep, yep. So it's just an improvement for everyone who uses the uh area down there. Like I said, they're trying to host more things down there and um we just want to put up a small pavilion. Okay. So commission members, do we feel like we have enough information to close the hearing, this hearing? I mean, I I don't know. It's kind of, I've never seen one proposed like this. I haven't either, but if the town put it out, the engineer's done it. I mean, that's just it's a It's got the built sock erosion control barrier around it. So they have the yeah. proper controls in. I think it's a bad precedent just to, to take it like this. I mean, we, we have other I mean, applicants. That... that should be somebody presenting this thing. Okay, can we have a motion to continue then? And with well, the, the oh, has... oh, we can't. What's that? The applicant has to request the continuance. No, you guys can you can recommend a continuance. You no, can choose we to continue something earlier. I thought. Yeah, you can continue. Oh, uh, I would like uh, make a motion to continue um, the request uh, for determination, eighty Spring it, Street. Yep. Excuse me, one second. Do we need to open it to the public first? Oh, sorry. Oh, I thought I I. Thought I did. It's we're going on two hours. This is a long one for us. Are there any? And you're not closing. And you're not closing the public hearing. So they'll be. Um, they'll still. You know, at the next meeting too, they'll they'll still be that opportunity right. just to make. I it can ask not, now. Are there any abutters online to. that have any questions or concerns, comments that they want to make regarding eighty Spring Street um, project? We have one hand up, Pat Neary. Um, Wendy, when you address her, just make sure name and address, yep. please. Yep. Pat, you can go ahead, please. Hi. Uh, state yep. your name and address. Pat Neary, Lakeside Drive. I'm Thank just you. curious, is that town-owned land that we're talking about? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Pat. Okay, nothing else, no one else? Um, I don't see anything else. Okay. Um, Mark, you wanna remake that motion to- Oh, sure, so just to continue. Uh, I make a motion to continue the request for term determination for 80 Spring Street, map 21, lot 167 to our October- 10th. 10th meeting? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and a roll call vote, Mark? Aye. Harry? Aye. Eileen? Aye. And myself, Wendy? Aye. Okay, thanks. So we'll look at that again. Maybe somebody can come on and show it or something. Oh, I wrote my continue in a wrong spot. Okay, so we're done with the hearings. Um, I got to get back to my agenda. Administrative. I'm sorry? Administrative items. Yep. Um, and Marilyn, you can come back in. Uh, conservative con uh, conservation commission business administrative items so these have all been reviewed and looked at so it's just a matter of issuing so the certificate of compliance for 350 cross street map 118 lot 23 2489 the applicant representative is robert vaza the dep file number se 116 15 28 do we have a motion to approve I'll make a motion to issue, issue a certificate issue. of compliance for 350 Cross Street, Map 118, Lot 232489. Second. Thank you. Uh, roll call vote, Marilyn? Aye. Harry? Aye. Eileen? Aye. Mark? Aye. And myself, Wendy? Aye. Next up, we have a certificate of compliance for 90 East Street, Map 26, Lot 44. Applicant representative is Collins Engineering. DP file number is SE 116 1547. I'll make a motion to issue certificate of compliance for 90 E Street, Map 26, Lot 44. Second. 
Thank you. Roll call vote. Marilyn? Aye. Eileen? Aye. Mark? Aye. Harry? Aye. And myself, Wendy? Aye. Uh, next up, Certificate of Compliance for 2073 South Street, Map 125, Lot 13-6. Applicant representative is Milton Morris. DP file number SC-116-1527. Motion to issue Certificate of Compliance for 2073 South Street, Map 125, Lot 13-6. Second. Thank you. Roll call vote, Marilyn? Aye. Harry? Aye. Eileen? Aye. Why do we have two for the same address? I, they're different. Uh, Mark? Aye. And myself, Wendy? Aye. The file numbers are different. I, I don't I don't really I think 2073 if I my I think it's the houses that were built down by the Yeah, it is. But I'm I'm just curious why two are the same house numbers. Well, they're the same house. Yeah, I don't know why. My understanding was that one had never been closed out and okay. and needed to be closed out and then there was the current active one. So you know, when he came in to ask, I agreed. Uh, yeah, all you know, everything needs to be closed out. One of them had no work done at all. Right. Okay. That's oh, maybe that's yeah, maybe that makes... the thirteen. Okay, so maybe the yeah. this one that I'm going to read next is the one that was never closed out yeah, or I never the, done work the lower on. Lower number then... is the older one usually. Yep. Yep. Okay. So it okay. Certificate of compliance for 2073 South Street Map 125 Lot 13 dash six. Applicant representative Milton Morris. DEP file number SE 116 1357. Make a motion to issue certificate of compliance 2073 South Street Map 125 Lot 1316 with a different um, DEP number SE 116 1357. Second. Thank you. Roll call vote. Marilyn. Aye. Harry. Aye. Mark. Aye. Eileen? Aye. And myself, Wendy? Aye. Uh, next up, we have administrative adjustments request for um, V5, U6, and S8, 115 KV transmission lines, ACR project. Uh, it's SC 116-1546. Um, I read it a week ago, and I don't remember, but they just needed to add or some they needed to shift something a little bit, Nicole. I don't know if you got any information on that. I don't know if we what we're supposed to vote on with it, just that we approve it. Like, well, you can't just approve it if we don't know what it is. Well, it's the lines that were put in. We we accepted and approved. Um, I think it was an NOI, maybe it, no, it wasn't an NOI. It's the lines that go across. Um, down 104. Is it 104? Help me, help me. Um, I, heading I towards Home Depot. Someone, what, Wendy, I believe there's someone here who can explain what the request is. Thank oh, you. okay. Yep. Hi, my name is Andrew McNulty. I'm with VHB. I'm representing um, National Grid, who operates um, under the operating companies Massachusetts Electric Company and New England Power Company. Hi, when... Andrew. Welcome. Hey, thank you for having me. Um, you're all doing God's work in these long meetings here. Um <laughs> So when we submitted the NOI application, I was told by the National Grid legal team that we were only operating within the Massachusetts Electric Company uh, holdings within Bridgewater. Um, once the order of conditions was issued, the National Grid legal team did a review of the parcels and found that there were also New England Power Company uh, holdings within the area. So we're requesting to update the applicant um, to be both Massachusetts Electric Company and New England Power Company. That's right. It comes back to me now. Thank you, Andrew. No problem. Thank you. Um, so that's what would we um, approve the addition of is that's probably what we're so, doing. Wendy, I talked to DEP. Um, any changes at this point to the Essentially, it's just, you know, like a, Scriv a Scrivener's thing. They want to make edits to it and, and change it. But anything like this, especially considering they're changing 
not changing, but adding in an applicant slash representative has to be approved by you guys. And if you're okay with it, Andrew, feel free to please show that red line version so they can see exactly what we're talking about um, on your screen, Andrew. Um, if you guys are okay with those edits, I just need a vote that says you are okay with those and I can move forward with oh, Andrew okay. internally and get that done. But I myself do not have the authority to grant permission, which is why DEP said this comes back to you guys to say if you're okay with it or not. Okay, so it's just an okay with addition of New England. Yeah, Power yeah, Company. just take, take a look at it. Uh, make sure you're good with everything they have put as edits. And if you are, then that's fine. Sorry. So some of this Can you is... zoom in a whole heck of a lot? Yep, yep, sorry. <laughs> Work. It's it. just that first page, right, right Andrew? Yes. Yeah. So we have um, the organization, the applicant. Um, we had listed New England Power Company and we added and Massachusetts Electric Company. These are both operating companies under National Grid um, that are listed in the land um, ownership records, from my understanding, um, for the parcels that have the transmission lines on them. Um, legal also requested just um, for recording purposes to have um, a return added on there. We don't have to have it on there if, um, if you know, if, if that isn't going to fly. Um, and the reason why we crossed out the book and page um, was just because we added uh, the legal department. Wanted to make sure that um, the book and page listed the... Um, notes that had the easement information and not just the um, parcel ownership information. So we're not changing any of the project plans. The actual parcels where the project is happening is not changing. The scope of work is not changing. It's just additional information being provided as well as the um, change in the applicant name. Got it. Okay. And uh, just so you know, DEP didn't take any real issue with any of it. It's just, mm -hmm. it's not their place and it's not my place to say that this is okay. It's you guys' cool. uh, place to decide okay. that. That's fine. That makes sense. Good. Yeah, it's, not mean, a mo it's not a modification of any plans. It's just, nope. just, oh, it's just there. Thank you. <laughs> I'm okay with that too. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody have issue with it? No, zero issue. None. Okay. Harry and Mark? None. No issue. Okay, excellent. Me too. So just do an official vote saying you accept the changes. Okay, so can I have a vote to accept the changes um, of, do we have to go through that whole thing? <laughs> I think you could just make the motion to, you know, make the, uh, accept the changes of administrative adjustment request. There you go, thanks. Second. So thank you. And roll call vote, Marilyn? Aye. Eileen? Aye. Harry? Aye. Mark? Aye. And myself, Wendy, I. All right, Andrew, thanks. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, last up, we have the Lakeshore um, under our administrative items, the Lakeshore cease and desist. Yep. Mind if uh, I take this, Wendy? Yeah, go for it. All right. So, you know, I want to keep this cease and desist open, um, especially when the agent gets in. And at the last meeting, it really hit me that, you know, we were very, very careful with, with this order of conditions. And God love Dick Monteith, whose neighborhood was right there, Lakeshore Drive. We worked this order of conditions hard. And then it was the maintenance and the going forward afterwards that we were very, very stringent with. And we it is in our order of conditions. And this is what I want to go through. I want to keep the discussion going. And then they're in violation and they need to be held accountable. Nobody is above getting out of order of conditions. So they clearly had specials because of our concern for that exact thing. So you all got a copy of my email that I had shared. Everybody got a copy of that. Again, yeah. this is not a hearing. We don't have to vote. Or we, you know. So, I mean, clearly under condition number two, the VISTA pruning shall be conducted. And this is what we really designed. So it's under direct supervision of a registered arborist, forester, wetland biologist, or registered landscape architect who shall provide the conservation commission 
written report documenting these results of the pruning work. The work shall be done, strict compliance with the number sequence one through five listed in the September 2nd, 2016 correspondent from Ecotech vegetated man plan. So they have a vegetated maintenance plan. Oh, am I still? My, can you hear yep. me? I, oh, yep. sorry. Yep. Okay. <laughs> they Which have a vegetated ma listening. maintenance plan. All right. They have to follow that vegetated maintenance plan. The applicant on the special condition shall not shall replace in time any size of any unauthorized tree removal in the area. Live trees shall be left with healthy canopy and all pruning shall be done personal on feet and supervised by licensed professional. So I, it just again, that was like yesterday to me. Um, and, and I just had to go back and look everything up. So they are clearly in violation, which I want to further discuss on. I mean, I want to see those mature, mature trees put back. I mean, this is not fair to our Lakeshore residents that now have glare. They very clearly did not follow. The, now, there's even question if the order of conditions are still open or if they have, were ever re extended from 2016. You know, so even if they, we have no record of them being extended, even if they were extended to the common date, they are still violating their vegetated management plan. They have a VMP in place. And at no point was a professional, to my knowledge, out there with them. At no point, the office cannot find any follow-up written report. They're supposed to get with, uh, conservation's supposed to get a written report. But I'm being, you know, we have got to have people abide by their order of conditions um, and abide by, by a plan. So, you know, to me, this is a no-brainer. They are, they are under violation. One that again, they no direct supervision. You know, um, they just sent the contractor out. There was there was no written reports ever provided to um, Bridgewater Conservation Commission. They're in clear violation. I mean, and, and they it needs to be they need to be held accountable. And the thing is, with the violation, there's no time on it. We can we can issue a violation. I mean, there's a violation going on here, it's, and it's been happening since right after that, and it should never happen. But clearly, I have several issues. Again, the vegetative management plan is not being followed. Whether there's an act of order of conditions out there, no one seems to, we don't seem to know on that. But yeah, again, mm -hmm. even if there was an act of uh, order of conditions, they're clearly not following, they're not following the very it. simple rules that we had put in place for this reason to protect the NIP and its surrounding residents with those trees. So I'm going to be remain adamant that this season and desist stay in place until we have an agent that starts with us that can guide us on the violation. And I know myself, I'm gonna be pushing for, I want the mature trees that were ripped down that day viciously put back. So I, you know, this is up for discussion with the commission right now. I'd like to hear the input, you know, Harry, you were a big part of this with me, you know how, you know, we worked on it. So, you know, I'd like to get input from the other commissioners. And again, we'll keep this season to this open and follow up with the agent on the violation that will instill. I'm good with that, keeping it open until we clearly, get to the agent. Clearly in violation. Yep. Anybody else um, from the commission? Well, I, Pat, I see Pat's hand up, but anybody else from the commission? We can't. This is not a hearing, so we can't take questions uh, on the commission business. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a hearing. It, it's uh, conservation business. Mark, yeah, this can, is administrative can, business, not a public hearing. Yeah, but Mark can uh, partake in this. It's not the Lakeshore filing. So yes. Mark, you can ask questions and the other commissions can, but we cannot take public comment as commission business. Yeah, so I was just saying, is, and also the invasive species that have been allowed to kind of grow in that area, and that might even go hand in hand with what they cut down. They might have cut down invasive locust, but they haven't been really maintaining anything else like the oriental bittersweet and, you know, Japanese knotweed and all the other plants that are on an autumn olive. They, I don't know that they've been removing any of that. So, and, and that letter that you know, from 2016 that's referenced in the order conditions, um, it does say that they need to maintain it free of the invasive plants down there. So they had clear, they had clear, clear instructions along with, with the, with a professional to be on site and then provide us with follow-up written documents. This isn't, this isn't happening. So they need to be held accountable for not abiding by their order of conditions, whether they're valid or not anymore. Um, right. Harry, any thoughts, please? Oh, yeah. Well, now you know why I voted no. Yeah, I mean, I voted yes because they were within the rules and regulations on the plans, but we worked our butts off to make sure that the follow-up would stay maintained, and they, they dropped them. They have not done it, and I am not, 
I'm not gonna let it go, to be honest, guys. It's it's you have everybody has to follow the same rules. That's what we do order a conditions for, and they have a whole page of special conditions. A whole we have 10 special conditions that we did on that to, to yep. protect that area and to protect the residents from the glare, and, and all of a sudden, you know, everything torn down. It's 11 conditions. I got them in front of me. Yeah, I, I sent them to everybody. I mean, it just, it was not sitting with me well, so I went back and pulled everything. And like I said, you know, um, you, you got to you gotta maintain your order of conditions, and, and to the point that they even put a, veg, a VMP, a vegetative management plan in place, for what? You didn't, you didn't even buy by that. <laughs> you know, contractors don't have this knowledge. That's why we made sure that there was going to be a professional out there. Because a contractor doesn't have an order of conditions in their hands or a VP or a VMP plan in their hands. So right. we wanted right. to make sure that there was a professional person on site giving us written reports. Okay. Yeah. And if they notified people, I would have gone down there. Right. But instead I have to get a I have to get a call from the neighbors to go down there because they're working. So clearly there was no, there was no registered, uh, you know, licensed site professional out there. There was no professional person, whether it was an arborist, this or that. We, you know, there was multiple choices who they could hire as a professional because obviously the professional would have followed the VMP plan and not allowed that to happen. Right. So we don't have to be there if they have, no, we don't have to be there if they have a registered person that knows right. what they're doing. It with was the designed, VMP and when you read the, and, and I, you know, highlighted the order of condition, yeah. it was designed so that a professional would be on site and then give us written report. It was designed that no trees would be taken down only on foot by supervised, again, licensed professional. None of this has ever taken place. Okay. Yeah. I agree. And, you know, God love Dick Monteith, you know, like, so we we really had put that in place to, for a strong, strong, you know, um, protection. Right. Nope. 100% agree. Yep. And they've been doing this since the beginning because the first time they went down there, Dick Monteith, we, we had the thing up, no power tools, hand tools only, right? I got down there and they got chainsaws and a big, grass cutter and he was running it up and down the sides of the trees yep. to, to strip the branches and the people were cutting the the material that they didn't want and throwing it over the silt fence towards the pond so it's and, the and none of them spoke English so clearly it, 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 there's no licensed professional being on site with them and the, dam right. the main damage was done you know, in 2017, when they did that, you know, it, 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 again, I'm going to be a stickler with this. I want mature trees put back up. We can work with the agent on this when the agent's in place. But um, no, you haven't you haven't done any part of your order of conditions. And they continue to just go out there with no licensed professional, no nothing. And, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it sounds like to me, you guys want to continue this and, and keep it on the next agenda. Yep, yep. Keep oh, it yeah, it's not here, but we're we'll get we'll, the agent. Yep. We'll yep. keep it on the next agenda and work with the agent on the type of violation that we will be putting in, for, in, in force to them. And I can tell you now, mine's gonna be mature trees going back out there. Okay, that's that's fine. Because they ripped they ripped the protection away on the glare and everything. They were not supposed to touch mature trees. They weren't they just I, I'm very disheartened. Big business. Not paying attention. So I think you get my take on this. Yep. Yep. No, we were, you know, we work hard to work with them. We'll all right. Back. So we'll do that. Yep. Thanks for all that input, Marilyn, and for the work on, you know, reviewing and putting things in writing because it helps to have that. Yeah. Some things are like yesterday. I remember that one like yesterday. And then, yeah. And I wasn't, I wasn't on at that point so yeah, we had lost dick afterwards so um but yep so, so yep. that's it and does anybody is um do we have anything else on because i just shut my thing and my agenda was on it minutes but i can honestly say i have not reviewed minutes but if everybody else i don't think there are there, i don't think there are there any. aren't any at this oh, time okay. I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> at this time there aren't any at this time so 
that's it. Good meeting people. This is probably one of the longest ones I've been in two hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> yep. I'm going to go hit that chicken, but we have the last one motion to adjourn. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, everybody. And when I first right. came on, we were doing four, three and four hour meetings. Yeah, no, thanks. No, no, no. I don't think I'd be here if that was the case, because I couldn't do that every week. I'm hungry right now. I need to go get something to eat. <laughs> yes. Well, thanks, guys. Have a good one. Good All right. Thanks, All right. Nicole. We'll miss you, Nicole. Thing. No I problem. Thank Nicole very much, but she'll still be around a little bit. So we thank Nicole very much. Well, always here to help, guys. Yeah. Appreciate you very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye.